Now, the golf swing is a confusing movement at the best of times, especially if you're new to the game and a beginner golfer. Now, in this video, I'm going to be joined by Golf Monthly Top 50 coach Alex Elliott to talk about some swing traps that new golfers need to avoid. We're going to head out on the range and the golf course here at Kettleston Park to give you some top tips if you're just starting out on the game. Right, let's get going. All right, Alex, hello. We're going to chat swing traps here for new golfers on the range here at Kettleston Park Golf Club. And this is number one for me from what I see for new golfers. Mm. And it's leading up, lifting up, thinking that's how you get the ball in the air with the irons. That's not the case, is it? No, I think a lot of golfers just got to take comfort from the fact that the golf ball is designed with dimples. Mm -hmm. The dimples are like the aeroplane wings. They give it lift. Nice. What gives it the spin is your grooves on your club face. You've got to allow yourself to maximize using those grooves. And with an iron, we want to sort of picture a descending blow to get the middle part of these grooves to allow it to ride up as much as we can, rather than the sort of scoopy, we're sort of down towards this bottom edge. So could you give us a drill for new golfers watching now who might be a bit leany and not striking quite low to help them not do that, hit down on it and compress that ball a little bit yeah, more. I'll, I'll say two things here, Dan. First thing, the drill, I would just place a tee peg, one fingertip in front. It doesn't have to be too precise. What it all is, is just a bit of a focus point. Yeah. Now, if you think about this logically, for me to get that tee peg, if you look at this on player cam, if I don't transfer my weight, I've got no It'll be so far behind the ball. Exactly, and that's yeah. what we see. Like, your most common bad shot will probably be either a thin or a, sl or a bit of a top, possibly yeah. the longer irons, and we don't want that thin, fat or top. No. So, what I want you to be aware of, a couple of things, trying to hit the ball then through to the tee peg, mm -hmm. but also try and feel the impact. I've got sort of 70, 30 weight distribution onto this left side. That's gonna take our bottom of the arc ahead yep. and help you down. There we go, brilliant, brilliant tip there from Alex. And it is a swing trap. I think we see lots of new golfers fall into. So understand how the golf ball and the face work together. Understand where that weight needs to be and strike the ball better. Okay, a swing trap I see loads of beginner golfers get into is getting their aim wrong, Alex. So can you show us firstly what people are getting wrong when they start out with their aim and how they should be going about it? I think firstly, it's just the concept yes. of aiming. Because the golf ball is on that side of us, we all associate aiming our body first and yeah. that's where we fall into that trap. So let me explain this, Dan. So it would make sense in any other logical sport, this would happen. <laughs> um, we stand to the golf ball and we sort of aim our shoulders first straight towards let's take the flag because it's middle sure, of the green yeah, here. Yeah. Now this really impacts our ball to target line right. and that's what I want people to become a little bit more obsessed with. So have a look at this here, this really illustrates it. My shoulders and feet are aiming pretty much at the flag. Okay. Now if you just place that down parallel to this one here yeah, now. Way around. And come and have a look at this. Look how far well, right that is. But let's have a look at that. You can see now we're actually aiming at that tree. You're aiming way right there. Yeah. But it didn't so, feel like it, did it? No, no. And you stand over it and you, you look through your shoulder and you maybe see that from player cam now and just see actually, yeah, you know what? I feel like I'm aiming. Yeah. You hit a good shot, it finishes right. And then you associate actually what could have been a good swing as a bad one, but just with poor alignment. Interesting. So the routine I want golfers to think about here is standing behind that golf ball and firstly being fixated over the ball to target line. Okay. So I'm going to put my club up and sort of pick an intermediate target, only about two or three feet in front. Yeah. Let's just take that mark. Sure. I walk in and I build from the ball to the club bed, my hands to my body, not body down to the ball. Right. So I'm placing my club down, th thinking about that line that I had and sort of making a 90 degree angle between my club head and that line mm -hmm. that I'm sort of picturing. I then build my stance to that. So now when you look up, you'll feel like potentially aiming a little bit left. Interesting. But now if we place these down, I mean, my alignment's not my best thing, but it's a little I'll bit closer. I'll tell you closer. what, it's a bit better, isn't it? Exactly, it's closer. And, it, and it's interesting because it is all about that feel. So you felt there you're potentially going a little bit left, mm. but actually doing that routine, building that routine gets you aiming a bit better. Now that's something I think all new golfers need to build into their game early, fall into that habit. For right, sure. go on then, show us it right. and, and let's hit the shot, shall we? I'll do it properly, we'll go through the full routine. <laughs> okay, we're in. Picture that line, it doesn't have to be a long process. Walk it in, then have a little look up and then give it a hit. A little left of target, Catch a little bit of a pull. Ooh. And the wrong club. Bit of a pull, but I'd say you were aiming straight, you just pulled it there. So hey, you can't, you can't be great every time, but importantly, the aiming routine, build it into your swing early and you won't fall into that trap. 
Right, Alex, another swing trap I think a lot of new golfers watching now will fall into is watching loads of swings on Instagram, watching the tour pros do it and thinking, right, I've got to have the perfect swing to get out on the golf course. Now, that's not the case, is it? Let, let's simplify it a little bit. Definitely. I mean, you've only got to go to the Open this year, stand on the range, and you're going to see a host of different swings. Mm -hmm. The only place they are very similar is those six inches down at the ball, how yes. they deliver the club. So most people slice it, right? And don't just take this advice from me. Wyndham Clark, recent US Open champion. I read one of his uh, posts and they're talking with his coach. One week, if he's hooking it, you'll try and slice it on the range. Yeah. Basically, try and create opposites to find the middle ground. And that's as easy as it has to be. So a lot of people at home, with respect, you're probably slicing it a little bit, I reckon, new golfers especially. Yeah. So you're thinking maybe let's bring, a, let's bring a hook feeling on the range and see where we go from there. 100%. And that hook feeling will probably just be a straight shot for most golfers. Yes. So what I would suggest here, Dan, is really nice and simple. First things first, what's our only point of contact with the golf club? the grip. So hold the club up and look at this on player cam. All I want you to do is rotate your hands both left and right to the right side of the golf club okay. for a right-handed player to the left side of the golf club for a left-handed player. Now ball position with driver inside left heel making sure our shoulder alignment is not too left. Mm -hmm. These are little good habits that I always promote but what I want you to feel in the shot which is going to change our release which is then how that club comes into the ball is I want instead of feeling like we're Hitting it like this, which it might not feel like that, but if you're slicing it, Probably that's sort is, of the pattern. <laughs> yeah. I want you to feel that you're going to make more of that motion. Now, if you just watch my forearm there and my wrist, I'm sort of making that action. A lot of tennis players will feel it's a bit more of a it's forehand. It's like a topspin forehand, right? Exactly. So that's going to really, stronger grip, change the release, that's going to change the action, the direction, and how my club face comes into the ball. Hopefully, a little bit more into out and a little bit closed rather than out to in and a little bit open. <laughs> well, I think I think one great tip there on doing the opposite of what you're doing, get that feel. And more importantly, don't fall into that trap of trying to perfect your swing. Swing your swing and see how you get on. 100%. Right, Alex, spoke about hitting down on irons to get the ball up. We're now going to pretty much completely contradict ourselves, but it's a trap that a lot of new golfers fall into and it's not hitting up on the driver. It's getting a little bit too steep, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, you look at your, your driver face, there's not many groups or not no. any at all. And, and also there's very little loft, so it needs to be launched a little bit more. Now, this can be a really simple concept. You can do a lot of this with your setups. So let's just talk through setup first. Sure, yeah. When you get the ball position too back in your stance, so if you look at me from player cam here, even having it sort of a club head back in our stance could just be a little bit too much. Okay. In the sense of, we're going to hit it's down It's going to become it. down, so and really also, move it up. For sure. And then also, if it's too back, you might end up trying to manipulate your swing in other ways. Yeah. So, little routine that I say for every golfer. First things first, line it up right in the middle of your stance. Mm -hmm. Now, I like to fly my left toe, so yes. I move that out slightly <laughs> and just move my right foot away like that. Straight away now, I know my ball position is up in my stance. Yeah. Further up, later in the arc, more likely to hit up. Uh, just what's that flaring of the toe interestingly for people at home? Um, essentially just to help me open the hips. Yeah. I've got a bit of a dodgy knee, um, <laughs> <laughs> which helps me sort of uh, protect that a little bit as well. But essentially it just opens my hips a little bit easier. Interesting. Me. Now, why have I got a towel in my hand? So this is a really good one, just as a focus point because it will feel a strange feeling when people first do this, yeah, especially sure. if they've got a habit of hitting hundreds of balls down. As soon as we get this, we need a little bit of focus. We need a little bit of feedback. So if I take the towel off you. Absolutely. So nice and simple, this is how you set this drill up. From player cam, I'm going to place my club head down, one in front, then two in front, and simply just roll your towel up, just here. Have a few practice swings just inside it, getting that feeling of just being more up and over the towel, yeah. rather than through the towel. Interesting. And it is as simple as that. The ball position will help you do it, the setup will help you do it, and here you go. So I'll talk you through my full routine and right foot away. Another little aid is I feel as though I, my right shoulder is a little bit lower than my left. Again, if I go like this, look how that would be really up this way. Somewhere in the middle of those two, do you reckon? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't be too complicated with it. So here we go, let's sit this one away, Dan. Got my setup, got my towel, my focus here is up and over the towel. Beauty. Look at that, great strike. And it, it, it is, it is tricky for new golfers to almost get their head around that, I think, especially when we've spoken about irons already. Take this drill to the range with you though, practice hitting up on that ball, and don't fall into that trap of getting too steep with your driver. Okay, another swing trap a lot of beginner golfers fall into, Alex, is, and I do this myself still after playing for a long time, is using too much loft around the green in situations like this. What, what would you say to people like that? 
yeah, I mean, a lot of us see the guys on TV, don't we? And we see the likes of Phil Mickelson, John Ram messing around in the short game area, playing it high. I would just default away from any of your lofted clubs. Yeah. So, for example, most people will grab 58. I'm going to hand you that. Just get it away from yeah, you, shall yeah, we? Yeah, I mean, it looks great if you pull it off, doesn't it? It's brilliant, <laughs> but we want percentage game, we want consistency. Everybody that comes to a lesson for me, they go, oh, I want consistency. Well, I think default to pitching wedge. You've still got a little bit of loft, but it's going to get the ball rolling yep. a little bit. So, nice and easy. All I want people to do is have the ball slightly towards the back of their stance. Have a look at this from player cam. My stance is roughly two club head widths apart. Mm -hmm. Weight on my left. And simply just feel as though you just rock that triangle back and through, keeping that weight left. It's as easy as that. Don't go complicated. Really hard. See, I'm a big, I see, I'm a big fan of that and it does look good. But when you've got nothing to go over and the yeah. pin's nice and close to you, keep the ball low, get it rolling as soon as possible. Exactly. So I'm just going to pick a landing zone, maybe a yard, two yards on. Go on then. Ball back. Let's get it rolling. Oh. It's rolling quickly, nearly went in there. So yeah, next time you're in a situation like this, nothing to go over, deal off those wedges, make life easy for yourself. Right, Alex, uh, this isn't so much a swing trap as a, as a grip trap. I can call it that, but new golfers might not know how to grip the club properly. They might think it wants to go in their palm or wherever it initially feels comfortable. Can you talk us through where, where it should be going, basically? Yeah, and first thing I'd say is just make sure your grip thickness is right for you. Is that so, on the actual club itself? Yeah, because that'll play like a big part in being able okay. to get the club in the right position. And a little tip for that is just your longest finger should just be able to just touch it. It should yeah. be like digging in or there shouldn't be too much of a gap. Brilliant. That's what I reckon. Good little tip, that. Yeah, so palmy grip, that would be when the club is sort of sat through here, as you said, mm -hmm. right? A nice, simple way of getting that, we all go to the range, we all improve our golf, use your basket, not just to carry your balls, but think about it. If you're picking up that basket, I wouldn't grab it in the palm. <laughs> no. No, you wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense. <laughs> no, it would look a bit weird. Yeah, <laughs> you would grab it in the fingers. Yeah. So grab your basket, have your club in your hand, and just place them on top of each other, and then just remove the basket. Easy. That's where I want the club to be. And you'll notice the club feels lighter, your wrist can move much more, and that's gonna help with speed. It's yep. gonna help with club face control. And as you go to those longer clubs, that's where you'll see even more of an effect with this. Brilliant, and a super easy tip there from Alex, I think, to get that right. And if you're a new golfer, just getting into the game, make sure these habits are right. Put that club in the right part of your hand. Right, finally then, Alex, I think a trap people fall into, new golfers, probably even current golfers, getting a bit too excited about club head speed, how yeah. fast they're swinging it, how hard they're hitting it, how far it may or may not be going. We don't really want to fall into that trap, do we? No, I actually often find with club golfers, the faster they swing it, very often the shorter it goes. Yes. Because their quality of strike goes, so their ball speed drops. Mm -hmm. So I want people to be more bothered about ball speed than club head speed. Correct. So if we think about tempo, because when you make a good tempo swing down, like you're probably more likely going to find the centre. And this is be. the bit we want to be yes. hitting it. I know it sounds basic, <laughs> but a lot of us just forget that. I think I do as well, mate. Even as a golfer who's played for how many years now, I get a bit excited, let's say. I do. I've good. got to tell myself not to do Stop it. Stop it. So like a little mantra I use, and you can make it whatever you want, Dan, but I go Sergio for the backswing and Aguero on the way through. Other footballers are available. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it goes back to when I was a kid. I, I remember playing one of my best rounds where I had like a song in my head. Yeah. I'm not gonna tell you what song, but I had a song in my head and I had great rhythm all day. I found the middle, I drove the ball great, I hit my irons great. Yeah. And it's so basic, but we forget it. Yeah. So I'd, I'd even hit a few on the range, maybe even say it out loud. So mm. here we go. Go on, give us a Sergio. So I'd go a bit like this, Sergio, Aguero, and it just gives you something to work love to that. because you can't touch tempo. No. And that's the hard thing about it. But having a mantra really does help. I love that. I'm going to pick a footballer. I can't work out who. Yeah, I'll come back to you on that. But as a new golfer, even as an experienced golfer, don't fall into that trap of chasing club head speed. Chase that strike and that ball speed instead. Right, so there you have it. Some swing traps that beginner golfers need to avoid as they start out in the game. Massive thanks to Alex Elliott for joining us for that. I thought he gave some brilliant bits of advice there that you can take out into your practice sessions and onto the golf course, hopefully to play some better golf. Now, if there's something of yourself you've recognised in these videos or something we've missed out, let me know down in the comments because I'd love to hear from you. But for now, from Kettleson Park Golf Club, thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.